Hey everyone, real quick before we dive into this next episode, I have a winner I have to announce from the live stream two days ago. And the winner of the guide trip with Griff is a uh, YouTube commenter, Justin P. Um, if you see this, Justin, I'll flash you, know, you up next to this, but if you see this, please DM me or Griff and we'll make sure you get out on that guide trip with him. And if any of you are looking for a guide trip, please reach out to Griff. Uh, he is guiding the rest of the year and he can certainly help you out. Also during the live stream, we had a merch sale and that went so well, we decided to extend it until tomorrow, Friday at 11.59 p.m. So that sale is if you buy $60 of Crappie Chronicles merch, you get a free hat. So load your cart up with $60 worth of stuff, toss in a hat and uh, use code LIVESTREAM at checkout and you'll get that hat for free. We do have more of those blue sweatshirts that went out of stock immediately in stock right now and they'll probably run out of stock by the end of the day tomorrow or Friday. So get on top of that. Thank you everyone for the support. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, without further ado, Here's the next episode of The Crappie Chronicles. When anglers think of trophy fisheries and dream destinations, most think of untouched locations far away from civilization, but not us. Located within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis is a mecca of crappie fishing opportunities. These waters are home to the biggest crappies across the ice belt, and maybe even the Midwest. Our goal is simple, to document the catch and release of as many trophy caliber crappies as possible in one ice season. Along the way, we hope to educate you on how to catch the biggest crappie of your life. Joining me again this season, two of the best ice fishermen in the country, Adam Griffith and Matt Waldron. With the help of wild game cook, Brian Pinkala, we will also show you new and creative ways to prepare fish like you've never seen before. The ice season is here and we're ready to rock. Welcome back. This is season two of the Crappie Chronicles. Good morning, and welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. I'm your host, Adam Bartusik, and just give me a sec. I need to grab some sunglasses. Okay. All right. And I'm your host, Adam Bartusik. That is much better. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been buying the merch. Uh, we very much thank you for it. It helps us make more videos, helps us keep everything going. And uh, yeah, a bunch of sizes of different uh, options are selling out. And if you wanted that gray long sleeve with the back black fish logo, we actually got a little bit more in stock. So head on over and grab it. Now, today is Sunday, January, I think it's the 23rd. Um, and yeah, the bite's kind of gotten stagged in everywhere. And these past few days we've had like snowstorm, high pressure, snowstorm, low pressure. There's just a lot of changing pressure going on right now and that tends to not be very good. However, today um, we have the pressure bottoming out. So we're heading out for a night episode, yes. It is about noon, we're gonna go out, start looking for them and uh, we're gonna hunker down for some nighttime fishing in search of an 18 incher within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis. So I gotta go catch up with Waldo and Griff. Pink call is out in like Oregon or something right now, I don't know, but we're gonna get on the road, we're gonna go catch some giants. Let's have some fun.
<laughs> Broke this Almost. <laughs> oh, it's a blue. It's yeah. a blue girl. <laughs> That's a nice bite, man. Long. Super long. That's, I bet that's a 13. Those two what? A long light. All right, we'll get yeah, it. Yeah, dump that one back. Okay, guys. So we are out on the lake. If you can hear football behind you, it's because I'm listening to the playoffs in my truck. But um, yeah, so we got out here. We're in a small lake, and um, the water's fairly clear actually out here. And we started drilling up in the weeds, and uh, literally saw nothing. So we came out to the basin. There's just one basin in this lake, and there's a couple of permanents out here, but not really a lot of people. And uh, we just started drilling around, and Waldo actually ran into a school of like. It wasn't that many. Uh, we kind of noticed, and we're wondering if they only school in smaller schools, but Waldo ended up catching a couple nice ones. Um, one was actually pretty good white. We didn't get, get a measurement on it because we're just bouncing around looking for more. I've always heard this lake's a night bite lake, and we're catching them during the day right now. We're finally getting some clouds rolling in, so yeah, conditions are setting up pretty good, and I think we're gonna go lean into them a little bit if we can just run into more of these pods that are roaming around. Huh. Oh, little baby. Looks like we're having to weed through little guys to get to big ones. Which I'm okay with. Uh, they are five to seven feet off of bottom. Griff's right next to me right now. We're going to try to tag team this school. Wonder Bread drop kick is doing work. Oh no, he came off. That felt better. I am not right on top of it. That's what it looks like. Drill hole right next to me. Another gill. Another gill? Another gilly gilly! figured out anything they like whatever we drop down there <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> pretty much he's got a drop Maybe kick and not. i got a pinhead on and we got a couple of crappies a couple of bluegills oh so they're schooled together yeah oh yeah dude i had one i was dropping it down there and all of a sudden my line stopped i looked up and there's just a fish holding it caught it on the, the pinhead <laughs> i think it was going like 100 miles an hour down there too Gills. Yeah, really nice gills. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's cool. Is it real, like, almost broke every head back? Yeah, this time the nut came off. <laughs> that's a nice bluegill. Who's lying? That's fine. How'd you get my line? <laughs> Has he got both of them in his mouth? No. Oh. Well, like, how cool would that be? I was like, why am I not? Oh my did god. You, so that, did you watch the what? episode? What? Was so I go, and I'm like, yeah, you're on me. Ooh, that one seems a bit better. Yeah, that's better. White. That's spunk. It's gonna be a white. Oh, it's black. It is black. They're getting bigger. I haven't choked it, that's a solid fish. Back. 
No, maybe not. You know, a little. Another black. You know, little. Solid ones. We're gonna get some big ones, dude. Oh yeah. Got to chase them around. I don't think we've found it, the true pot of them yet. Oh, I don't think so either. Huh? I don't think so either. I think we're gonna run into Mega Mama School. Maybe that's what happens. You just catch the few crappies that are in the school first, and then it's all bluegills. You know? Oh, a little crappie. Got him. Little guy. I think. Yep. But that's my first crappie. We've been just hopping around, drilling a bunch of holes, and We'll run into a little pot of them out in the basin. It's kind of cool because it's, uh, it's a really deep lake and the fish are schooled up uh, like 10 feet below the ice. So they're really obvious when you find them. And then we just drill a bunch of holes right next to each other and try to beat up the whole school. It does seem like if we stay in that 20 foot range, it's probably the best. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, good one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. There we go. There's a good one on the pinhead. Awesome start. Not a giant, but it's a good one, and it's a point in the right direction. It's cold out here, so I'm going to get this fish released. That one came on a 1 ounce pinhead minnow. And uh, what we're doing is we, we gritted out a corner of the base and we finally found fish in like that 20 foot depth range. So essentially what we're doing is we're truck trolling. We're driving 100 yards, drilling out a little area, and then all of a sudden if we find fish, awesome. We just grid out that area even tighter. Uh, if we don't, then we just keep moving the next 100 yards. And so pretty much once you find a big giant basin, and you find a contour that they're at, you can kind of keep going along that contour and follow around schools and find new ones. Uh, so that's kind of what we've been doing so far, but uh, hey, we have a meetup actually. Bart, you're gonna have to help me with the date again. It's Thursday. What's your guess? 17th. Yeah, there you yep. go. Yep, 5 to 8 p.m. Thursday, February 17th. Woo, okay. So it's gonna be a, a fun time. You can hang out with all of us. Where here. is it? At Thorn Brothers. Yes. And you're going to be able to hang out with us. And yeah, we're going to talk fish and do some seminars and show special pricing guys. too. That is right. Show special pricing. It's going to be a ton of fun. So we really hope to see you guys all there. Um, we're going to have all the rods out, uh, especially Pink's rod, which is this guy right here. I just got my clock cleaned by a crappie and was too lazy to go get more fathead minnows. So. We're gonna keep bouncing around here though. Uh, it seems like our school that we were on has left us, so we're gonna get back after it. Nope, crappy. This is unreal. One drop little crappie, one drop big bluegill, one drop little bluegill, next drop nice crappie. You just never really know. <laughs> I have no clue. They all race the exact same way. <laughs> yeah, so half of them just completely miss it. You dirty dog. This is just ridiculous. <laughs> They're so little. I just can't believe how much you got to sit through them. Or we just haven't found a school of good ones yet. Producer, pull that, please.
grassy. It's white. That's what you're fighting. That's a solid one. Heck yeah, beautiful fish. Probably a 12 incher. That thing came in so fast. I mean, flew up there. I'm like, eh, I wonder what this is. Kind of figured it was one of those guys. Oh my gosh, absolutely choke slammed the Tika Minnow. That's your turn, sucker. There's a nice one. Barty? That one? Yeah. Dude, they're so they're so heavy yeah. for their size. Like they're built real good. I have them five feet down. They're eating the Tico Minnow head first right now, guys. Really? Yes. I truly don't think so. It does not matter at all. It's just so much fun. Ah! Boop. <laughs> this is so much fun. And they're so small. <laughs> they are so coming unglued on this thing. <laughs> they are so mad at it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh jeez. I never thought I'd have so much fun catching dinks. Definitely not marking them. Dude, eat it. <laughs> I don't think there's a bluegill. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Oh. There's a big one. Yeah. Whoo! Finally! Dude, that was such a big mark. <laughs> I was like looking at it, I was like, holy cow. Woo. I'm just keeping this guy in the hole for a second because it's like negative five right now. It is super cold, but we have been hopping around um, all day on the edge of this basin. This lake has one one basin, and basically what we figured out was 20 to 20 or like 18 to 22 feet is um, the hot spot. And right as the sun's starting to set now, we finally kind of got into a pod where we saw some bigger fish, and I popped this big dog. Look at how thick this thing is. Just built to the max. And Griff said this is a hybrid, so let's we'll... See, let's see it, look at it again. Put it down on the board. We'll first. put it on the board. And we've got a 14 and a quarter. So another 14 to add to the board. Just a beautiful black crappie. There's a small chance it's a hybrid, but it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna get this one back because it's wicked cold. Fills up that seven and a half inch hole. And saying good... Good bye. Yeah, so these gloves, we talked about it in the last video a little bit, but these are the Blackfish Arid gloves, and um, they're awesome. They're seriously our favorite gloves for fishing in uh, these cold conditions. I'll, I'll drop a link in the description if you want to check them out. This is what we all wear, and there's been a ton of questions about them, but sun's going down. The giants out here anyway, from what we've heard and what I've experienced, like to eat in the dark, so uh, that's a good try. sign. That's a good sign. Nice but job, buddy. we're going to get back at it. Boom. Well, obviously it is dark. And once again, two episodes in a row, we stayed out here at night thinking that it was going to turn on. And uh, no, it is absolutely terrible. Uh, definitely a day bite. So what we thought was wrong. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, these past this past weekend, and actually these past two weekends, has been a lot of breaking down kind of newer water for us. Uh, places where we've caught big ones in the past, but don't fish a ton, and uh, it's been a good learning experience. A lot of fun, a lot of fun to document, and it's trial and error. And we tell all of you we're going to show you everything. So that's kind of what we've been doing. So, <clears throat> yeah kind of a struggle bus got one really big one and we definitely have found a few lakes that we think it can really go down on we just definitely need to come here at a different time of day and make a bit better plan so that's what the next coming weeks will be when we start revisiting some of these places and uh yeah start really dialing in to get an 18 but what you'll probably see next i don't know maybe we'll come back fishing out here maybe it'll be ryan cooking because he's currently on a flight back from somewhere on the west coast he was skiing all weekend but uh yeah Thank you so much for watching, and like I said, this might lead into something, it might not. So if it doesn't, thank you for watching, and we're on to the next one. Otherwise, uh, yeah, here's Ryan cooking. All right, what's up guys? We're back at the house. Uh, I didn't fish with the guys this time. I was actually on a trip out west, but I talked to Bart. Where this is like a couple days after the fact now, but uh, sounded like the bite was a little bit tough. They caught some, some big fish, but there was like absolutely no night bite going on, which is what we've been looking for. So that kind of sucks. So we're still on the hunt for a really good night bite. Um, but on the plus side, now we get to cook in this episode because they didn't smash. So here we are. Um, before I get into all the cooking stuff, I just want to say there is still a merch sale going on. So we had a live stream just last night and it goes till tomorrow, which is uh, January 27th, I believe. 28th. 28th. So today's the 27th. Tomorrow's the 28th. Goes till tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. So if you put it in at midnight, you're probably screwed. But if you do it before that, um, if you put $60 worth of merch in your cart and then add a hat, you get the hat for free. So pretty good deal if you're looking to score some merch. We still have the mapped out sweatshirts in there, those blue ones you can still get, and there's tons of hats. So get whatever you're looking for, and uh, the sales, this is the only sale we're gonna do, I'm pretty sure. So get in there and uh, get some merch. But we're gonna get into cooking right now, and uh, I'll show you what we're making. All right, so we're gonna jump into this right now. I have a bunch of crappie fillets that uh, we just knocked the sides off. They're super fresh, which is amazing. I love cooking these fish as fresh as possible instead of leaving them in the freezer for like a long time because they're just, they lose the quality really, really quick. So try to use your fish really, really fresh and uh, this is gonna be sweet. We're kind of diving into like some party food here. So we've gotten a lot of uh, requests for stuff like different recipes that are not fried fish. So this is gonna be another one of those where you don't have to fry them. Uh, we're gonna actually do it in the oven and it's gonna go pretty quick. So we're gonna do a crappie melt crostini. Um, so I got a nice uh, baguette here. We're gonna to toast that up in the oven and uh, do it with some olive oil and some garlic. And then what I'm gonna do right now is season the fish. We're gonna get the fish in the oven because that takes the longest. It's only gonna take like 15 to 20 minutes, but we need to let it cool before we do anything. So I'm gonna get the fish going. We're gonna season it. We're using catch cook seasonings again, which we've been using in some of the other episodes. Going with the whiteout and the campfire smoked salt. And that's it. A little bit of oil, pop it in the oven. 400 degrees, 15 minutes, and we're moving. Here we go. All right, so I put a little avocado oil on there and we seasoned it with the whiteout and the smoked salt. And now I'm just gonna throw it in the oven. Got it preheated behind me. We're gonna drop it in there, 15 minutes. And then we just gotta let it cool all the way down. All right, so I'm gonna cut up this baguette right now. We're just gonna make little rounds. So um, the goal here is to basically make a whole pan. These are almost gonna be like appetizer type things. So uh, I'm just gonna cut these on a little bit of a bias. This is a baguette that's uh, semi-fresh. So it's a little crispy on the outside, which is fine because we're just gonna basically make it into toast. So I'm gonna cut it on a bias with like a bread knife. Uh, that makes it a lot easier. And all we're looking for is these little little discs just the size of this. So they're just gonna be like one biters, which is perfect. And I make them about a half an inch. All right, so I just pulled the fish out. It's just chilling back there. It's just gotta cool all the way down because for what we're doing, we don't want it to be hot anymore. So I got the bread all cut up. I'm just gonna put it onto this baking sheet and just kind of lightly 
coat them in oil and a little bit of salt and then I'm gonna toss them into that same oven. I'd leave it right at 400 and just get them to be a little bit crisp. You could do it under the broiler too. It would go a lot faster, but I know that I will burn them. So you can toss them into 400, let them get a little bit golden and we'll call it. Okay, so I just pulled the uh, bread out and it's very crispy. It's very hot though. So I'm just gonna wait a minute um, just till it cools down so I can handle it. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually just rub garlic on the bread. So instead of doing like butter or anything like that to get the, the garlic on it, I'm just gonna cut a clove of garlic in half and just rub it on. So we're gonna let it cool down for like two, three minutes just so I don't burn my hands off and then we're gonna do that. All right, I just got the bread all garlicked up. We put gar like rubbed a garlic clove on every single piece and I did it when it was just a little bit warm so the oil from that kind of like leaks into the bread but it smells unbelievable. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I got this bowl here. I got the fish totally cooled down. So I'm gonna take all the pieces of meat out, put it in this bowl and then I got some herbs here. So I got green onion and I got some fresh dill that I'm gonna mince up really, really fine. Put it in here, a little bit of mayo and uh, mix it all together. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of sharp cheddar cheese into this. So what the ultimate thing here is we're gonna take this out once it's mixed together, a little bit of avocado on the toast, and then take the fish mix, put it on top, and then we're gonna pop it in the broiler for like one to two minutes. And then I got a little bit of uh, roasted red peppers to finish it off and then we're done. Here we go. Okay, so the fish mixture is totally done here and I just mashed up an avocado. I didn't put anything else in this, it's just mashed up avocado. So what I'm gonna do is kind of go through each one, put a little bit of avocado on there and then put a little bit of the fish mixture on the top and then pop it in the broiler. And then uh, all we're gonna put on top after it's done in the broiler is just a little bit of uh, sliced up roasted red peppers, which I have a can of right there. So I'm gonna get moving on this. It's a little bit tedious, but we don't have that many here so it shouldn't take very long. Okay, we got all of these set up right now. So the tray is good to go. Uh, pop them in the broiler. One to two minutes, don't burn this. All we're trying to do is get that cheese just a little bit melted. Pull them out and uh, then I'm gonna cut up the red peppers. Don't try to do anything while you're trying to broil something, you're definitely gonna burn it. So I'm gonna pop them in right now. All right, so I'm gonna pop these out. They've been in there for like maybe two minutes. And uh, you can see the cheese is just starting to melt a little bit and that's all we want. We don't wanna like cook this anymore actually. Um, so I'm gonna set these here. Cut up this roasted red pepper, and that's it. Then we're done. Okay, so the roasted red peppers are on there. We're looking real good right now. Everything's pretty much done. I got a little bit of leftover dill here, so I'm just gonna put that on there. Absolutely unnecessary. Do not need it, but it looks sick, so we're gonna do it. All right, so these things are done, and they are looking Wago. Um, we're just plating them up right now and then we're gonna crush them. But like these would be super sick for a Super Bowl party or anything. Something you can use the crappie meat for that, you know, it's not a fish fry, something like that. Like I said, these things look insane. I think anybody would crush these. Um, and it's really cool. I mean, like literally the only seasoning in this is the catch and cook stuff. So we use the salt and the white out seasoning. Um, you know, we've been using both of those a lot, kind of in combination, just as kind of like a base seasoning which is great because if you have good ingredients, like we have a lot of fresh herbs, fresh fish, that's just enhancing the flavor. You're not really leaning on it to create the whole meal. So these, we're just, we're just enhancing this freshness with some really dope seasoning and it worked out really, really good. Um, but yeah, we still have a discount code going. So if you wanna try that stuff out, it works on anything. Like even if you're not cooking fish, you're doing chicken, beef, pork, whatever that seasoning is gonna be good on everything. So BART10 is the code, use the link in the description to go to Catch and Cook and uh, score some seasoning. They have breading too, so if you're trying to make the corn dogs or anything we've already made, you'll be able to use that stuff to do it. But uh, yeah, I'm stoked on these, these things are sick. Okay, we smashed those. Um, <laughs> but they were really, really good. Highly recommend making them. Like I said, perfect Super Bowl appetizer right there. Smash them out. Um, from here, I think we're gonna try to figure out a bite. 
we've been kind of talking about what the next moves are. Um, you know, everyone's just hyper focused on trying to get an absolute giant. And 18 is the goal. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of narrowing down our search to like fewer and fewer bodies of water. A lot less exploring, I think, is gonna go down. And uh, now we're just waiting for the right timing, right conditions, everything, to just send it on a really, really optimal bite. And hopefully we get a night bite coming soon because we think that's potentially when we could score a real giant. So um, if you guys love this recipe or anything like that, drop a comment down below if this is like the kind of stuff you guys are into and we'll do definitely do more of it. But uh, we're gonna go look for another bite, come up with some new recipes. And for now, we're on to the next one. Peace.